Welcome to the Kinship Caregiver Support Services Request for Proposals Information Session. My name is Karen Winston and I'm the Funding Process Coordinator. I'm a Senior Planner with Aging and Disability Services, which is a division of the Seattle Human Services Department. This recording of the information session will be posted on the HSD Funding Opportunity webpage. Please type your name and organization in the chat box for attendance purposes. The State of Washington's Public Records Act. Under Washington state law, the Public Records Act states that all materials received or created by the City of Seattle are considered public records. These records include, but are not limited to, the RFP or RFQ narrative responses, budget worksheets, board rosters, and other RFP, RFQ materials, including written or electronic correspondence. In addition, HSD RFP, RFQ application materials are released to rating committee members, and all rating committee members must sign and adhere to the confidentiality and contract conflict of interest statement. Personal identifiable information entered on these materials are sub subject to the Washington Public Records Act and may be subject to disclosure to a third party requester. During this information session, we will talk about, um, I'll start with the introduction. We'll go over the timeline, background and requirements, We'll cover submission instructions, the review and rating process. I have a few tips for you, followed by the appeals process, and we'll end with Q&A. The 2024 Kinship Caregiver Support Services Request for Proposals is an open and competitive funding process. Approximately $274,000 is available through the State Kinship Navigator Older Americans Act Title IIIe, which is services for grandparents. Seattle general funds may also be allocated when the 2024 budgets are finalized. Funding awards will be made for the period of January 1st, 2025 through, the de through December 31st, 2025. While it is the city's intention to renew agreements resulting from this funding opportunity on an annual basis through the 2028 program year, all future funding will be contingent upon performance and funding availability. Now here's the timeline. The funding opportunity was released on February 5th. Uh, today is the information session, February 14th. The last day to submit questions about the RFP is Friday, March 1st by 5 p.m. Questions should be uh, submitted via email only to me at karen.winston at seattle.gov. The most important date is the application deadline which is March 15th, applications are to be submitted by 12 p.m. The rating and review process will take place from April 1st to April 15th. If the rating panel needs clarification for any of the proposals, we will conduct virtual interviews to address their questions. And those will be conducted on Friday, May 3rd, 2024. Awards will be announced on June 24th, and the contract start dates will be on January 1st, 2025. Starting on page four, we'll go over the background, the service and program models, eligibility criteria, populations, service components, performance measures, and key staff. Kinship care 
includes relatives caring for children ages 18 or younger on a dependency order within the child welfare system, as well as relatives caring for children not formally involved with the public welfare system. According to census data, about half of the grandparents who are responsible for grandchildren are ages 60 and older. Kinship caregivers, mostly grandparents, often struggle with the challenges of parenting a second family. Kinship caregivers tend to be older and have lower incomes, poorer health, and less education than non-kin foster parents. Research indicates that family resources, social support, and physical health affected the psychological distress in grandmothers raising grandchildren. Kinship caregivers face more challenges as foster parents than non-kin caregivers. Kinship caregivers receive less supervision and fewer services than non-kin caregivers. Thus, kin may not receive the support they need to nurture the children in their care, even though their needs for support may be greater. Starting on page five through seven uh, are the service and program models. HSD will invest in three program models for kinship caregivers. The kinship navigator, the kinship collaboration coordinator, and the kinship caregiver support program. The kinship navigator provides outreach and information about available resources and services to kinship caregivers age 18 and up who are caring for a family member's child. The Kinship Navigator provides assistant level services to help access services and resource, resources. Assistant level services include opening and maintaining a client file, screening for and referring to the needed service, advocacy to obtain the needed service, and follow up. The Kinship Collaboration Coordinator identifies and develops potential partnerships and relationships with community organizations and resources, conducts outreach and educational activities for kinship caregiver support groups and agencies, staffs and facilitates the monthly King County Kinship Collaboration, the full group and the steering committee meetings, develops an annual King County Kinship Collaboration Work Plan, coordinates kinship events and advocacy efforts, conducts outreach activities to create awareness and provide information on kinship resources and services through community fairs, kinship events, the KCKC meetings, kinship caregiver support groups, and other service organizations. The Kinship Caregiver Support Program conducts outreach and recruitment to reach isolated kinship caregivers. And outreach activities may include um, recruitment uh, through use of the brochure or door-to-door -door outreach, engaging in ethnic and religious leaders, uh, leaders and activities um, through involvement with community groups, provides presentations to other groups and partner agencies that work with older adults, the agency monthly newsletters, social service agencies, faith-based organizations, and schools. Group services includes kinship caregiver support group meetings and other activities designed to meet the needs of the kinship caregivers. Access and information and assistance um, includes uh, caregivers receiving information and referral services and assistance with accessing those resources. For example, financial assistance, energy assistance or shelter, medical and mental health services, legal services, and other family support needs. Case coordination may also be provided to caregivers. Uh, Follow-up activities 
will be completed to ensure that the caregiver's needs are met or that services have been accessed. And training such as the Kinship Resource Specialist Training Module or other relevant trainings may be provided for agency staff who work with caregivers or for kinship caregivers. The overarching goal of these programs is to reduce the, the physical and emotional stress experienced by kinship caregivers. Another goal is to stabilize and support the living situations of kinship caregivers and the children in their care. Eligible, eligible participants must be someone who is providing informal versus formal kinship care for another family member's child um, age 18 or younger. For the Kinship Navigator Program, caregivers must be age 18 or older. For the Kinship Caregiver Support Program, caregivers must be ages 55 and older. Caregivers must be King County residents for all three program components. Priority populations and focus populations for this funding are based on HSD's results-based accountability framework and ensures that the department's investments are dedicated to addressing disparities in these populations. Persons eligible to receive funding for the Kinship Caregiver Support Program includes a grandparent or step-grandparent or other adult relative who is raising a child or children age 18 or younger. And the asterisk there uh, refers to one exception. And this is, unless the youth is older than 18, but attends a high school and has documentation to verify that they are enrolled in the school. They're related by blood or marriage to the child or children and living with the child or children in Washington State and the primary caregiver of the child or children because the biological or adoptive parents are unable or unwilling to serve as the primary caregiver for the child or children. And the parent or parents is consistently absent from the home raising the child or children either with a legal relationship such as a legal custody, adoption, or informally, and at risk of not being able to continue the kinship caregiver without additional financial support services. Lastly, um, communities of color, including immigrants and refugees. Focus populations are identified as specific racial or ethnic groups within the priority population and with the data showing the highest disparities in the investment area. Given the data provided, focus populations for this investment opportunity are Black and African American, American Indian or Alaska Native, and Hispanic and Latinx. Starting on page eight, performance measures defined for these areas, uh, or excuse me, performance measures are defined by three areas, quantity, quality, and impact. For the Kinship Navigator, quantity may include the number of unduplicated kinship uh, caregiver clients served, the number of access assistance contacts made, the number of hours for care co case coordination, the number of supplemental services received, the number of outreach activities completed, and the number of surveys completed. For quality, it's the number of clients surveyed reporting good to excellent service. And for impact, it's the number and percent of clients reporting positive impact because of the service received. 
For the Kinship Collaboration Coordinator, quantity may include the number of kinship events or meetings coordinated with the King County Kinship Collaborative and kinship support groups. The number of outreach activities for kinship caregiver support groups and agencies. For quality, it's the number of new partnerships established with community organizations. And for impact, it's the number of caregivers that continue to provide for the children in their care. For the Kinship Caregiver Support Program, quantity may include the number of unduplicated caregivers served, the number of support group hours, the number of access assistance contacts made, the number of hours of case coordination, the number of outreach activities, the number of trainings, and the numbers of surveys completed. Quality includes the number of clients surveyed reporting good to excellent service. Impact includes the number of clients reporting positive impact because of the services. For reporting, HSD will collect information through surveys and get care. Get care is a data system used uh, as a state data system used by all area agencies on aging to track and report services funded through the Older American Act and other state and federal sources. Applicants must be able to collect and report participant level data in get care. Starting on page nine, key staff. Kinship navigators help kinship caregivers access kinship caregiver support services, which provide assistance with urgent needs such as food, clothing, transportation, household items, school and youth activities, and one-time help with rent or utilities to prevent eviction or utility shutoffs. The kinship navigators work with kinship caregivers to inform them and the local community about available resources. The navigator provides encouragement, support, and helps facilitate the participation of caregivers in services and programs that will assist in maintaining the children in their care and in their homes. The kinship collaborator, this position is responsible for project oversight, including recruitment and coordination of the collaborations membership groups, development of a network of kinship support groups, and services to kinship caregivers, working with the King County uh, Kinship Collaborative collaboration members to develop and secure kinship resources, leading advocacy efforts, and providing leadership to build and maintain the health and sustainability of the collaboration. Kinship Caregiver Support Program provides a wide array of activities, including outreach and recruitment, group services, access information and assistance, and training. Note, there should be a sufficient number of staff qualified, or excuse me, of qualified staff to effectively perform the activity proposed. Let me read that again. There should be a sufficient number of qualified staff to effectively perform the activities proposed. Next, we'll talk about the application. Applications are due on Friday, March 15th by 12 p.m. You can submit your application in two ways. The first is through the HSD online submission system, and a link is provided. HSD advises um, uploading proposed documents or proposal documents 
several hours prior to the deadline in case you encounter an issue with your internet connectivity. HSD is not responsible for ensuring that applications are received by the deadline. If you encounter issues with the online submission system, please email Sola Plumager at sola.plumager at seattle.gov. The second option is to submit your proposal via email to HSD underscore RFP underscore RFQ underscore email underscore submissions at seattle.gov. Email attachments are limited to 30 MBs. The subject heading must be titled 2024 Kinship Caregiver Support Services RFP. Any risks associated with submitting a proposal by email are borne by the applicant. Applicants will receive an email acknowledging receipt of their proposal. No fax or printed or mailed submissions are allowed. Applications must be complete and submitted on time. Again, complete application packets are due by Friday, March 15th by 12 p.m. Applications that do not follow the required format may lose points. The system is not an online application, so it will not allow you to save your documents, so no savings. You may upload files up to a maximum of 30 MBs. Acceptable file types include PDFs, Docs, DocX, RTF, XLS, or XLSX. There are no required fields to be, uh, excuse me, there are required fields to be completed. So ensure that you allow sufficient time to complete the steps in order to submit your application by the deadline. The system will automatically send a confirmation to all email addresses that you enter. Late applications will not be accepted. HSD is not responsible for ensuring that applications are received by the deadline. Applications must include a completed and signed application cover sheet, attachment two, a completed narrative response that is a maximum of 10 pages, not counting the budget or other documents. A completed proposal budget, attachment three, that's in Excel, and a completed proposal personnel detail budget, attachment four, also in Excel. A completed summary of proposal deliverables, that's attachment five, a letter of agreement from a fiscal sponsor, if applicable. Completed applications are due again by March 15th, 2024 by 12 p.m. Proposals must be submitted through the HSD online submission system or via email. Again, no fax or mailed or delivered proposals will be accepted. Please allow ample time for uploading and confirmation receipt. Financial documents, it says page 18 there, but just ignore that. Uh, financial documents are collected for awarded applicants post award letter. Agencies for which we have incomplete or no financial and or insurance documents will be notified by the coordinator and required to submit all requested documents within four business days from the date of the written request. Financial and insurance documentation may be requested, um, are listed on page six of the application. 
fiscal sponsors, if applicable, applicants that have a fiscal sponsor must ensure that the fiscal sponsor can meet all criteria as listed in the HSD fiscal sponsor requirements document. Fiscal sponsors are required to comply with all HSD contracting requirements and the master agency services agreement. Fiscal sponsors are required to submit financial documents to HSD as outlined in the application and or at the request of the RFP coordinator. Full details on the fiscal sponsor requirements can be found on the HSD funding opportunity website. Applications will be rated based on five criteria. Program design can receive up to 35 points, capacity and experience up to 30 points, partnership and collaborations up to 15 points, culturally responsive services up to 20 points, budgets and leveraging will not be rated for a total of 100 points. Each uh, answer each section using the rating criteria as a guide, as this is how the raters will score the applications. Once applications are submitted, the rating committee will review all applications. If the rating committee um, has questions, uh, interviews will be scheduled on May 5th to address any clarifying questions. Final recommendations will be submitted to the HSD director and an agency and a public announcement will be released and the fiscal review. Here are our list of tips. Please follow the required format defined in the guidelines. Be specific, detailed, and concise. Answer all questions in the context of your proposed program. Submit an accurate budget using Excel templates and double check your numbers. Check the website regularly as updates and, changing, and changes could be made. Have someone read um, your application before you submit it. Be sure to meet the 10 page limit. Use the application submission checklist. Start early and allow time for the submission process. Review the online submission assistance page for helpful information. A link is listed there. And email your questions uh, by the Q&A deadline, again, which is March 1st by 5 p.m. Uh, to me at karen.winston at seattle.gov. Now for the appeal process. If you would like to appeal the decision, you may appeal based on only two criteria. The grounds for appeals includes violation of policies established in this funding opportunity, or failure to adhere to the guidelines or published criteria and or procedures established in the funding opportunity. Appeals deadlines. Appeals must be received within four business days from the date of the written application status. That's the award or the denial letter. A written decision by the HSD director will be made within four business days of receipt of the appeal. The HSD director decision is final. No contracts resulting from the solicitation will be executed until the appeals process has closed. An appeal may not prevent HSD from issuing an interim contract for services to meet the important needs of the client. Questions, please email me at karen.winston at seattle.gov. 
prior to Friday, March 1st. Again, that's the deadline, March 1st at 5 p.m. Question and answers will all be posted on the HSD Funding Opportunity webpage, so be sure to check the webpage regularly. Only written answers are official. And any issues and or questions about the online submission uh, system, please contact Sola Plumature, the funding process advisor. And again, her email is sola.plumature at seattle.gov. And lastly, here's a snapshot of the Kinship Caregiver Support Services RFP um, on the HSD webpage. And it's the right column here is where you can find and download the documents that I referred to, including the Excel spreadsheets. Thank you very much and good luck to all of you. This concludes the information session for the Kinship Caregiver Support Services RFP.